Hello everyone and welcome to the Make Do Review. My name is Jack. And my name is Emily. And today on the Make Do Review podcast, we are reviewing... Frozen 2. How are you today, Emily? I am doing good. Today has been a fantastic day. How about you? Very good. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's been a nice, chill day. You know, went to the cinema. uh, Actually done some stuff. Payday. Hallelujah. Uh, (laughs) um, But very good. Um, So we just saw Frozen 2. We've literally just gotten back. And uh, before we get into it, what do you think of Frozen 1? What's your... Yeah. So I loved Frozen. I remember the first time I watched it and I was just absolutely blown away by the music. Like, that's what hit me the most. And also the fact that the music was quite different. There was the massive, big musical power ballad, but also, like, um, that kind of quite ancient chanting sound, which continues into this... Oh, yeah, yeah. ...in this um, film. Um, And just also the storyline as well. I mean, obviously everyone knows it really focused on the sisters and it kind of really threw away the tropes and made fun of the old tropes such as marrying someone you've just met and this and the other um so i absolutely loved it and i'm so glad that they took the time to really come up with a good story like a good like idea and character relationships for this second film so yeah what about you did you like frozen i know the answer but for the people (laughs) listening no (laughs) <laughs> uh, for me obviously I never saw Frozen in the cinema and I'm trying to remember how I saw it I feel like I just watched it at home at some yeah, point yeah that's what I did yeah and um, I thought it was, obviously it was a big deal at the time when it came out because we were just talking about that it came out like six years ago yeah which is crazy to think because the song Let It Go still cuts about today Um, it's still huge yeah exactly so yeah, it was this huge deal. It, apparently, it was breaking new grounds uh, for uh, for women characters and you know, and Disney animated films, which mm-hmm. is such a good thing to see. You know, they they can be role models and not just damsel in distresses. Are you know, they fall in love with the first person they meet, which you said they make fun of those tropes and all that, and they push it to the side. But in my opinion, I think it's like the most overrated Disney film ever made. No hate, but <laughs> that's just how I feel. I, I feel like it's, you know, it's kind, it, it starts off, like, really interesting, and then it goes into that Disney trope where it's just mystical, and it's, you know, it, it, all of a sudden there's, like, these, you know, magic trolls that pop in and stuff. Because I was liking the stuff with the sisters. I was like, this is an interesting take. And then they split them up right, in the, like, at the start of the film, and then, you know, there's that whole thing. But, yeah, uh, the way I see Frozen is just an overrated movie. And that's what it's always going to be with me. I think maybe if I saw it when it came out, I might have appreciated it for what it was. Mm-hmm. But um, for me, it was a big hype and it was a big letdown for me. I think the thing is with the first one... But music is fantastic. Yeah. Cannot cannot stress that enough. The thing it's one is with the, the first thing. one is I think it got so hyped because it was so groundbreaking in terms of what Disney had done before. Yeah. So I can understand how if you watch it after the hype that you maybe are like, oh okay, well it's just It's another you know, Disney it's film another to Disney me, film. you know. But it's not just another Disney film, which is why it was so big but saying that disney had started to break their own tropes with things like brave and tangled where the characters are less and less (laughs) no i'm not saying about good uh, i'm talking about the characters and breaking the stigma of the damsel in distress which you know i i do love the old disney's and they're quite charming but they very much are of their time whereas they were slowly moving towards this so to finally see and the fact that they turned Hans into the villain and then it was Elsa and Anna that saved each other. You know, obviously Kristoff is there and we love him, but it was about them saving each other rather than the man coming in. Yeah, that's a good way of seeing it, like how the previous Disney princess films before Frozen, 
it was kind of like a stepping stone where it was they like were, yeah. they're building up to this bigger thing. And that's a really good because well, Brave was a Pixar film, right? Yeah, it was. You're shaking your head at me. <laughs> yeah, Brave was Disney Pixar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other ones aren't Pixar. Oh, I have no idea. I literally watched Brave <laughs> once, and that was it. Well, well, of course, it's not good. Um, but yeah, obviously, it's like it was like maybe a stepping stone for them in trying to figure mm. it out. Because I like Tangled. I think that's a I really love good. Tangled. Yeah, Tangled's my favorite, and I think that's probably wise. Because as a as a young like girl, there were obviously I love the princesses, but there was no one feisty, and for me, she. Even though I was slightly older, like I yeah. was an older child by the time that came out. Into, I wasn't even a child. I was like twelve when that came out. Is that how long ago? I think it came wow. out in twenty ten. I could be mistaken, but I have to check that. Mm. But she's the first princess that's like feisty, and she sneaks out and does what she wants to do. And she's, she barters with this guy, and she's yeah, got yeah. a frying pan that she whacks people with and stuff. Yeah, I do so. like it. It's very likable characters. Yeah. Especially with the main character, which is really important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, to me, it, it was... And obviously, when I saw the trailer for this, I was actually really interested, though. Like, the trailer was very mysterious. And it was. It was om- ominous, and it wasn't silly or, you know... You know, because obviously, you got your silly characters yeah. in the movie, but it was, like, really kind of, like, ooh, weird. It looks darker, and it looks you know more adult because you made a really good point that the children who obviously watched the first frozen when it came out are now really young exactly now they've grown up six years later now it's kind of that's that's what i think disney do best they they know their audience and obviously when it comes to their sequels they're like yeah this is the sequel for the people who watched this as a kid because even right at the beginning um i mean there's even a song about is it called something's never changed the song yeah but they're they're basically talking about how they're they're older and how you like implying the audience have gotten older and um like olaf very much represents the audience in terms of do Mm -hmm. i i think i know everything but one day this this stuff that's freaking me out will make sense when i'm older and questioning getting older and feelings and is it I'm feeling yeah. angry. Is this okay? And whatever. And it's okay to have different feelings and, you know, be angry and, you know, if yeah. it's justified, you know. So it very much was apparent does... in this film that it was yeah. we'll... trying to bring up the audience with it. Yeah, we'll get to that because it, it definitely starts to do that. But then I feel like it gets a bit lost at the end. Like they don't really drive it home. But anyway, um, I, um, as... <laughs> you just shrugged. <laughs> I was thinking about that point. I was like, you know what? I kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we just saw Frozen 2, which came out on the 22nd of November 2019 with a runtime of 1 hour and 43 minutes, directed by, once again, and written by uh, Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee, with a cast of Adina Menzel as Elsa, Chris and Bell as Anna, Josh Gad as Olaf, and Jonathan Groff as Kristoff. So everyone returns for the sequel, which is always nice. Um, so Emily, what did you think of Frozen Two? Spoiler free for now. Um, Spoiler free for now. Yeah. Still, I really liked this. Yeah, it didn't blow me away as much as the first one, probably because obviously the first one was so groundbreaking in terms of what it was breaking, like the tropes it was breaking and stuff. But as a young person, I was like, wow, I wish this these films had come out when I was younger. And also just feeling like, oh, wow, I'm I'm glad these films are being made because it did so much to continue that breaking of the trope of, you know, it continues to take the piss out of Anna for falling in love and wanting to get married to this guy that she just met and um, re-establishing this bond between the sisters, uh, showing the relationship between Kristoff and Anna. Um, and then showing Kristoff's feelings as well, which you never would see in like their old stuff, you know, the men talking about their feelings and things. But I also really loved the mystical side of this. It brought out like different elements of magic. Um, and I liked the storyline of like kind of nature and earth and that, that side of things, uh, which I think is very current. Um, 
But yeah, I didn't know necessarily if the storyline was much different. I think he pointed this out earlier. The storyline itself, in terms of the beats, wasn't much different to the first one. I think it was just the, no. the messages within it had changed slightly and developed yeah. matu- like different, maturity-wise. Yeah, different story, but same structure. Yeah. And it meets the same beats as the first one, so they've obviously got like a formula. Yeah, like Elsa's still trying to discover who she is. She's still not feeling like fully herself and what she should be doing. Um, Anna is still trying to chase after her sister and make sure she's okay and yeah. Kristoff's then chasing after her and Elsa stuff. still doesn't let others help her out and you know Yeah. You know. That's where that's where the movie started to kinda like drop points for me. I was like, oh, we're seeing a lot of the same stuff that was kinda resolved in the first one, you know. Mm. You need to let trust me and you know, we need to help each other out. We gotta to stick together. No, it doesn't do that. Mm. Anyway, continue. No, that was. No, that was that. <laughs> I mean, if I had more of a point, I've forgotten it. All oh, right, fair play. What um, were you? For me, yeah, like obviously, as I said, I not a huge fan of the first one. I get what it is. Like, I understand why people like it and why it did so well. But obviously, it was I wasn't on the hype train when it came out. I watched it later on, and I didn't really understand it. Um, well, I didn't really like come to terms with it. I, I didn't think it was that great. Uh, but with this one, I actually enjoyed it in a way. Like I enjoyed it more than the first one, and I actually may argue that it's maybe a better story than the first one as well. Um, there's a lot more going on, and maybe kind of like falls flat with that. I think they try add in too many things. There's like, a, like a whole set of like other people, like another culture and all that, and then you know. It kind of forgets about like main parts of like the main reasons of the story. You know what I mean? Um, oh, I get that. Sometimes it feels like they're like, oh, this thing, and then they drop it for a while, and then they come back to this like, thing again. But it, but it's always a case of like, remember what the main task is, and it's like we know what the main task <laughs> is. Just do it. You don't you don't have to keep reminding us what the main task is. Um, but yeah, but to be honest, I thought like seeing the trailer it was Elsa going on her own journey to like find like where she got her powers from yeah that's what I got from the trailer but it's actually they're they're all going together to I, I also feel sorry to butt in but no no jumping on that point I also feel like because I thought the same that mm-hmm. it was going to be much more Elsa driven yeah but you see Anna come into her own because she has a moment where she thinks she's the only one left to do anything yeah um at that point in the film and she does what she believes she has to now do for the good of the kingdom which in the first one we didn't really see it was more her as the silly younger sister she's fallen in love now she's trying to fight for her she gives power to a stranger yeah you know whereas in this one it's like okay she's a bit more sure of who she is but she's still a bit concerned about her sister and this and the other and i feel like by the end of this film she's come more secure into herself mm. and what she's capable of doing on her own and stuff yeah and knowing i can do these decisions and i can do these things as well yeah so uh, i'm trying to remember what i was saying but yeah I'd like I, I i enjoyed it there was some quite funny moments as well um obviously josh yeah. gad's there and he's he's really funny and i feel like he's really come into this character now he's just good he, he was probably just doing his own thing at some point he has some really like it's like really like grown up like stuff you know like yeah it's very adult like some of the things he says and we'll get to a, that this like my favorite part of the movie i think uh later on which involves um olaf um but yeah overall like once again, the characters are likable, and you know you can hold the Olaf uh, yes, plushie. Thank you. You can't see it, but we do have an. I Olaf have a giant plushie. Olaf <laughs> Zim Zim. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the the characters are likable. Music is fantastic. Again, like you can't fault it. It's like, you know, it, it it's the makings of a good Disney mm. movie. But. It, once again, I just feel like there's it falls flat. There's too many ideas thrown in, and then it's either forgotten about or it's not really, like, 
rounded off well as, or established well and to the point where you're like why did they even bother bring, make that bring that up I know. but either way i and i actually i think i enjoyed this film and you know it's not a great film i don't i don't think anyone's saying it's like fantastic but obviously it's more disney it's more frozen you know it, it's doing well you know it's already made like 350 million in its mm. first week is it yeah, it's only so. the first week um oh no Aye. well i think it only came out definitely in the uk on the 22nd Yes, I think it came out earlier, maybe for the, the uh, so it's yeah, been four right days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I yeah. just want to say what's with still spoiler free. I don't know if you found it, but the aesthetic, like the look of it, is beautiful. Like, again, it's it's definitely is wonderful. I was thinking that as well. It's definitely got this different look about it. It's not very Disney esque. No, and there were some really nice moments, especially in some of the songs where it kind of goes off and. It's own little world. Yeah. And it's very like visually stunning. Obviously the animation's fantastic. But it it, it had like this look of like a kinda indie film kinda It did. Like with the colours. It, it was a different feel, but it's obviously to give off the, this cooler, wintry tone. Yeah, because you know? obviously the first one is set in summer slash then yes, the snow. Yeah. Whereas this we see um autumn. Like yeah, you've got the leaves autumn, turning yeah, red, and you've yeah. got the pumpkin patch, which I <laughs> I loved that little moment, and um, obviously then it's got them in the forest and that yeah exactly or whatever. So, so yeah yeah a, beautiful a different look and uh, yeah I, I really liked it and it's like some of the like just like the wide shots and all that it just yeah. looked really nice even the animation I was looking at a photo that someone had posted on Twitter of like um, Anna and Elsa like embracing in the f- end of the first one and then again in this new one. And even within those six years, yeah. the animation is ever so slightly more crisper and there's so it, it's, much it's, more detail it's, and this and the other. Like it's just insane. It's mental like how far animation's coming now. And to, like when you look back at like two D and all that, that was revolutionary and then three D came out and it you know, like the start of three D films. We was have that horrible. awkward start of Yeah, it had a really horrible start, but then you know, like films like Shrek came out and all that, and that did really well. Um, and now, like now, it's just, it just they're just batting them out. Like, like it's like we're sitting in the cinema and I see like two trailers where Tom Holland's like the main the main star of an animation film. You know what I mean? I'm like, Jesus, like it's such they're a churning they're, out, they're they? churning out animation, and it, it's obviously easier. And well, I, it's not easy, but it's obviously a, a simpler process now. And um and it's it's getting better and better. It is. Um, it's really exciting. But actually. yeah, it's really exciting. So, shall we go into spoilers? I think we should. So this is your spoiler warning if you have not seen the film, or indeed the first film. Uh, watch it if you wish. Come back. Uh, put your headphones in and just listen to to acting people give their opinions on things <laughs> <laughs> on an animated film <laughs> on an animated film <laughs> but it's coming to that season it is that wintry season um but yeah uh emily big any moments that you want to talk about any like your favorite moments least favorite moments so my favorite moments that i have at the moment yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say like it, the beginning for me was, I don't know why, but I was kind of like so bored when it was like like they were telling the story and all that about uh, this like these people that live in the forest. I did quite like seeing the mum and dad again, but it was the first time we've heard them speak as well. As a young king, did they speak in the first one? I don't think they did. Yeah, they do when um. Oh, did they? When they're talking to Elsa about keeping her, uh, oh yeah, powers concealed yeah, yeah. And stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, they are they younger in this one? I didn't. No, really I just realized that. I was thinking of oh, the right. king entangled. <laughs> <laughs> I was like picturing him as old and then younger. No, no, like, no, 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 no. Different, king. different, different king. Different they do kingdom. look similar, to be fair. They do. Um, yeah. Oh, but you, there is an Easter egg in uh, Tangled, though, isn't there? No, you, no. In oh, no, Frozen, that, in Frozen, where Tang- there's a yeah, that's yeah, it. You th- 
Anyway. You guy. <laughs> okay, so one of my little favorite moments, which okay. I forgot to actually write down, is that moment where Anna and Olaf are in the pumpkin patch. As soon as I saw yeah. Olaf sunbathing on a little rug in a pumpkin patch, I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. <laughs> and then Anna's in her really nice dress and she's got some like dry corn like in her hair. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> let me live that moment, please. Um, but in terms of like actual bits, uh, I really loved uh, Elsa running at the sea, which we see in the yeah, trailer as well. It's a pretty cool moment. It's, the, it's her, like, the first time she goes for it and she doesn't quite conquer it and she gets, like, swept away and then just this moment where she's back and she's soaking wet, but just this determined look in her face, like, I'm I going to do I did like that as well. This. I thought it was really cool. Like, mm. the whole tone of it changed. And you see the character's tone change of like, I can do this and I will do this. Mm. And she does it. <laughs> yeah. That was just a really nice moment. I loved that animation. I loved the look of that section. And I just loved her, like, you know, she pulls her hair back, like, mm. right, this, yeah, um, this is the this serious is, this is bit. business. Yeah. Um, and I also loved when Anna has finished her song. Um, Which one? <laughs> gosh, let me get out my other notes. Wait, what, what bit? When after Ola, in in the cave. In the cave. Did you think that was sad? I th- I feel like it was very underwhelming. And well, I may as well say that there's a moment where Elsa is kind of frozen, <laughs> um, in a cave in that um cave or whatever, and then obviously because her powers are gone, now um Olaf um disappears as well. So. It's, it's meant to be a sad moment when you think, oh my god, they've killed Olaf. But it's Disney, and they're not going to kill him. So. Yeah, I think it's called The Next Right Thing. Okay. Possibly. I could be wrong. We're, I'm literally just looking up the names of the songs for the first time as we're talking. Yeah, because it's, it's the song after Show Yourself. So I think yeah, so. Right. So she's in the cave. She thinks she's lost Elsa. And now Olaf has kind of like floated away in a flurry of snowflakes. But you know he's not gone because he goes away and then he's in a pile. Well, for a moment, <laughs> I was like, are they seriously? Are they going there? Are no. they seriously doing this to no, Olaf? I, I didn't have a single doubt. Because then he's in a little pile of snow. Yeah, exactly. And then for him to come back later. And I'm like, oh my god. But anyway, Dude. I love the moment where of, I love that I loved the song and the message of that song. But I loved when it kind of comes to the end of it and she's she climbs out of the cave she pulls mm-hmm. herself together climbs out the cave and she's stood there and she's like i've got to like now it's up to me i have to do this i have to do the next best thing and she goes and gets the trolls and she goes mm-hmm. talks to the um the general and the army um that were trapped in the forest well they try to stop her yeah she talks to them and, and convinces them to to go along with her plan and she breaks the dam mm-hmm. um and i love that moment because damn I feel like <laughs> God. I feel like the first film, as I said earlier in, before the spoilers, that Elsa. It was very much about Elsa fi- trying to figure out who she is, and Anna's yeah. just like the, a bit of a silly younger sister who then tries to help her. Whereas I still feel like Elsa's on a journey of finding herself, but Anna na- is as well now, and I and I feel like by the end of this film, she is more confident in herself and her abilities and that she has become a person in her own right, not just the younger sister of Elsa trying to help her. Yeah, sure. Um, and then I just loved the song. There's, there's a good moment where she says, like, I have powers, you know, like, you don't. And yeah. then she's like, yeah, but I, uh, you know, I climbed up a mountain, stopped a snow monster, got... Uh, what was it called again? Got like, frozen. Got frozen and all that. Came and defeated back my ex. And defeated my ex boyfriend from killing you. So w- all without, without magic. Power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, and I thought it was quite good. I was like, yeah, fair play. Yeah, she did do exactly. That. So um, I feel like that drives ho- that home. And then I also just really enjoyed the whole moment that was the song "Lost in the Woods," <laughs> sung the power, by Christoph. The power the ballad. Power ballad. Yeah, I've seen a tweet so about funny. that. It's like, in the first movie, it doesn't give um, Christoph uh, his own song. And Frozen 2 gives him his own song where he sings with himself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was fantastic. Yeah, I I, I did like it. I, at first, I thought, oh, they're going really, this is going on for quite a while. 
But it is good. It's definitely. But the thing is, kids aren't going to get it. I don't think. No. Because I I don't think they're going to get what the adults see. Where it's like, ah, oh, it's an eighties power it's ballad. It's very this much really an eighties power ballad, and it even has that um nod to Bohemian Rhapsody. It does, yeah, and then it has like the crossfade where he, it's just the, his face, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like yeah, he he sees Anna, he runs up to her, but she disappears and all that. It's really good. Yeah. It's really well done. I mean, I love the fact that they gave. A boy, a boy, a sensitive power ballad about his feelings, but then the way they went about it as well was just so funny. But like, not, mm. not in a funny way that takes away the point of they've given a guy a song about yeah. his feelings. But it was just the way he presented it was great. The thing is, like, I, it was good to see that they gave that character a bit more to do and kind of flesh them out a bit. But I, it was, I feel like we've seen that before when it's like the boy is trying to put pose and then he's getting misunderstood and oh yeah he's trying all... to propose yeah Anna and then this whole thing, uh, yeah and then it kind of goes all wrong you know i feel like we've seen that so many times and you know and it's like it, it always it always ends in the same way but that but that drives me to like the end um like the end ending where it's just so lo- like mushy and happy ending and everything works out for everyone kingdom doesn't get destroyed the people in the woods are happy uh you know the the five um what are they called the five elements the five spirits are happy again and you know then he proposes and then and then anna's queen and it it just keeps going on oh and and then um (laughs) <laughs> Olaf is alive again. It's yeah. like, of course he's alive. I, Elsa made him, <laughs> so she just makes him again. Um, but anyway, but I think that, that was my main. I was like, <laughs> oh god, this ending is just. Too... But I liked, I liked the fact that Kristoff was struggling to propose, and he keeps saying stuff and putting his foot in it because I think it it re it's, it's so cliche. Though. But I feel like it reiterates that he's not this typical masculine man perfect princeling thing that other disney the other disney films in previous time would have had him be yeah because he's not really the hero he's just kind of like even in the first one he wasn't really the hero he was just there yeah he was he was uh anna's ride and it's like um there was a um, there's a, a a line where um uh Kristen Bell, I just saw she was talking about it on a talk show, yeah. where she said she stood up in like surprise and excitement. And the line is when um, Anna is running from the trolls when she's trying to lead them to the dam, and she falls, and he grabs her on Sven, um, and he says, "I'm here. Like, what can I do?" So oh, rather yeah. than like being like, "I've saved you," or like, you know, "Don't worry, I've got this," or whatever, he's saying. Oh like, yeah, I'm here. You know, you tell me yeah. what you need from me. That kind of proves my point once again. He's just her raid. You know, he he's the one to help her get to that place. Yeah. Then she sorts. He's out. not trying to be masculine man all the time. I'm in charge. I can save you. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Well, no. Okay. Going, and then also go, going back to my point, it now makes me think. Okay, maybe it is intentional that he's like this bumbling idiot trying to propose because he's not a romantic. And that's where the power ballad comes from, even though it is funny, but then it's to kind of show yeah. he's not a romantic, he is just some guy. Because then at the end, she you know? even apologises to him for leaving him, which is what his whole power ballad was about. Yeah, and like, he says now that... he's lost. Yeah. Oh yeah, lost in the woods. He's yeah. lost because he doesn't have his, you know, her, his strong woman. Yeah, oh, so she, okay, okay, and she okay. apologises for having left him again. Um, and he says, don't worry, my love's not fragile, as in, like, don't, like, we're still okay type yeah. thing. So, that whole relationship is so I did positive. like that line, my love's not fragile. Yeah, it's just so positive and it's so refreshing to see that kind of a relationship rather than yeah what we've had before. Um, Going back to, like, the start of this film, which I thought was so slow until it got to um, Elsa's song. Which I thought was so good. Oh, Into the Unknown. Yeah, yeah. it was so good. Because it was kind of like a, a back and forward song. Like she was talking to this voice, even though the, they're not talking back. Yeah. And it was, I don't know why, I, I'm really liking it. And and I said this to Emily, like, this one felt like more like a musical. Like it was this, like, you know, it felt like a West Side Story or, a, you know what I mean? Um, or, really? like a, or like a Les Mis, where it's like... 
you know like the songs have meaning and all that it's not just like and that's why i like the songs in the first one because it's to do with the story it's yeah. not just a random song about love and stuff yeah it's it means something to the story you know into the unknown like she's gonna go out there and find out what what this voice is yeah. um which i you know I, I i really liked it. i loved how it was more of a musical mm. uh even though i thought some of the songs were a bit inappropriate sometimes like pl- the placements of the songs i can see a do, little do bit, you know what yeah. i mean like i, I I really couldn't give you an example, but it would be like something like bad happens, and then just all of a sudden there's like this happy like song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I I think the because obviously, and I said this to you, they're not gonna top um let it go. No. They're they were never um gonna get um uh a song that is gonna do as well as that song did. No. Um. That song just represents Frozen, the Frozen franchise as a whole. Exactly, and you still hear it today. Like it's yeah. still like kicking about. I don't think it's even in. There's not even like a snippet of it in this film. Yeah, there is. Is there? Yeah, you 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 showed this moment. There's a moment when she finds the place. Do you remember what the place is called? I can't remember. It was like a river. Oh, the the river where she's supposed to find herself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she goes there, and then. Uh, when she's walking through, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this whole theme, but it's um, that's even then it's done ironically. Yeah, and then they and then they nod to it as well. Like, the, uh I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, we haven't even mentioned there's this whole theme about how water has memories, and then yeah well it's not really a theme but it's like a like it's the, the it's structure like, of the film there's a moment where they're on their journey to go after uh, elsa's song into the unknown um the town gets evacuated because all the the spirits start she like walking them yeah she awoken them by singing this and repl- basically talking with this voice and they the spirits kind of do stuff to drive everyone out of the town and so her on a because they're Christoph unhappy with, um, yeah the they go off to um to to follow this voice that Elsa's talking about, and whilst they're in the the wagon on this ride, Olaf's spouting just like random trivia facts. Yeah, and one of which is that water has memories. memories. Yeah, so that it's like a re- it's a, a a thing that keeps popping up in the film. Like, yeah, and then it's like every time Elsa like kind of freezes stuff, um, it will reappear as like the figures of the past, and then that's a memory. So. Uh, which is interesting, but then it got to this point where they find the boat that their parents were on, and um, that and that really bothered me. Cause they that, kind of just brush over why exactly. that was there as oh, it must have just washed up. Oh yeah, it's just like it must have just washed up from the, the Black Sea, <gasps> the Black Sea. But why would they be there? And then you know, and then they say, but oh, why? How would it have got? Bo- there was no point in the boat being there except for it to explain that. Th- their parents were going to that uh, yeah. place that her their her mother kept talking about. I feel like, yeah, that could have been explained. Like the reason why their parents were going to the place they were going to could have been explained in a different way because they kind of just brush over the fact that the boat's there, and then they say, "Well, how could it have got through the mist into the forest?" Um, if it only allowed us into it, and then they kind of are like, "Oh, un- unless nobody was on it." And then that's it. So it's kind of a bit like, oh, okay, yeah. well, whatever. We're just going to go along with this. Well, that's kind of what happens throughout the whole film. They just kind of throw something in there and then it either just kind of, they gloss over it and move on or it's just kind of like, oh, forgot about that. Like you said, um, there's a, a theme with Olaf where he's kind of being represented as the kids in the audience how he's grown up and all that and there's like these moments every so often he's like his head hurts he's like oh you know something's wrong you know so i'm changing and all that but then he's talking about transformation he doesn't know what that means exactly it's like i still don't know what the word transform and it's just random to me because it's never really actually explained he he doesn't change or anything like that or do you know what i mean i feel like it was just maybe like a, a slide dig at the kids like your bodies are changing. You know, no, you're going through changes. <laughs> I don't think it was a nod to, like, the kids 
like body changes. I think it was more like <laughs> that sounds really weird to say. Can you imagine Disney? Just it, <laughs> it's more to do with um like the emotions. For example, there's a moment where um Elsa like hugs Anna and Olaf when she's saying she needs to go on and do this the rest of it alone, and they're like, "No, we're coming with you." And then she pushes them off in this little ice boat that she quickly quickly makes and um Anna's Random again. At, Anna then is angry they're like they end up in this river and Anna is really angry at her sister for pushing her away again and then Olaf admits that he's feeling angry too and he doesn't understand this feeling but he like tries to explain it and Anna's like you're allowed to feel angry at her because what she did wasn't nice to do and I feel like that's the underlying message with Olaf is like we acknowledge that you the audience are older um even Anna has this song about trying to f- what is this feeling of like darkness she's feeling grief um mm. but then she has to kind of pull herself out of it and continue and do the next best thing and stuff so I think it's more a nod to the fact that the kids are more mature now and then they are up that you know if you're a young yeah. kid you're about to go into your teenage years as well yeah that was another thing that really bothered me was the constant like I'm here I'm here to help and no you have to leave this is too dangerous for you it's just yeah it's like oh, I'm so sick of stories doing this where it's like no you're just a kid or no I'm more powerful I have powers you don't why are you running into fire and then it's like I why are you running into fire and I'm just bored at that point I'm like oh god I'm like sick of this. Like it's just such a cliche when it comes to, you know, family. You yeah, know? that did get a little bit. Yeah. Repetitive. You know, I have to say. Um. He like even like the whole point of the story was for them to find this voice, which they do at the end. If you if you still not got the name for this place that they go to. Because I can't remember the name. It's something ridiculous. And then there's like a song for it as well. Um, but yeah, uh, they get there. Well, I, well, Elsa gets there finally. She rides a war horse. It's badass. It's it's cool. Yeah, so that's the she has to tame I all did, the elements. I thought that was I thought that was a pretty sick scene. How she was fighting with the water, yeah, using her powers. But it was like a horse, and there was a moment where the horse is like. I'm trying to kill you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it fully like pushes her down at the bottom of the ocean. It's really cool. And then she tames the horse. I thought that was cool. And then um uh, and then she gets to this place and then there's this really cool song, like really nice song, uh, that she sings, which I have the name of. It's called Show Yourself. Yes, uh, we love this song also. <laughs> yeah, so that was a fantastic song. Nearly got me, I'm not gonna lie. I got I got the goosebumps. Didn't make, didn't like choke me up, but I, I was feeling the feelings. <laughs> um, I think the place I'm gonna probably butcher how you pronounce it. Yeah, go on then. Ah, Atohalan. Look, this is how it's written. Sorry, sorry, audience. Bear with. Where is it? There. Ah. Uh, yeah, Atohalan. Atohalan. Yeah, yeah, because there's a song. It's like only Atohalan will know. Um. Yeah, so or Otter Hallen. It's they pronounce it Otter Hallen. Otter Hallen. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. It. Um, so but she gets there, and then obviously the whole thing is only Otter Hallen will know is because that's where all the memories and for, no what's forgotten. I think that was the thing. Yeah, everything that's forgotten only that place will know, and then she gets there, and then. I really thought the movie was going to go there where it's like, oh, surprise, the paints are still alive or whatever, or mum's still alive. Um, I really thought that they were going to get there and there'd be this, like, arethal goddess Yeah, yeah, that's thing, what I was... Ex- power or I was hoping so, because they kept saying there's a fifth element, there's, like, a, a, a fifth one. But I called it um, in my own mind really early on when they first Elsa. said that. I was like, I bet that's Elsa. Well, well, it makes sense, because it's <laughs> just... Which isn't it, isn't ice just water anyway? So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um. Anyway, um. I have to point out because the whole reason, on, the whole reason why there is this voice is because of what happened in the forest. Yeah, we haven't mentioned in the past. This. So what happened was we see the clip right at the beginning where their dad is telling them the story of when he was younger. And they were in the Enchanted Forest and there was the Northuldra people, mm-hmm. the tribe. 
um, with the uh, people of Arendelle and they kind of built this, the people of Arendelle built this dam to keep out the mass of water to protect, to like kind of protect Arendelle and I wasn't too sure quite what the well, point of the no, dam was. They said it was going to protect them. Yeah. Like Arendelle said, we built this dam for you to protect your waters. Yeah, it's like and a peace that. offering. But then they were like, it's not going to protect our waters because it's going to overflow and Whatever. Yeah, so what it happens is we, at first, we don't know quite what happened, but they go from being really peaceful together and, like, celebrating to suddenly fighting, and um, the spirits of the forest get angry and chuck people out and keep people out and then keep people that are stuck in. So when Anna and Elsa go in, they're allowed in by this fog that protects the forest, and that's when they find because she's the fifth uh, yeah so that's where they find the people that were trapped in there so the members of the North Ulder tribe that were trapped in there and then the members of the king's army that were trapped in there Um. so then that is obviously why they then have to find out what the truth is which is that their grandfather you know had betrayed them, betrayed yeah. them basically and killed the leader of the tribe it was mo- it was more of a case of like we fight first so they don't they can't fight us because yeah. they're magic we can't trust them with magic people yeah. with magic or have too much power yeah so that's more that's power than to respect a king yeah oh uh, yeah that was the line more so then that's respecting. yeah that's when and anna the realizes who voiced the grandfather was the man who played doc ock and spider-man 3 just thought i'd throw that out there thank you very much <laughs> Um, <laughs> and you um, know, I, I I did this during the sorry, I'll let you continue. But I did this during the movie where I was sitting there. I was like, I need to get IMDb out because there's too many voices that I recognise, but I have no clue. I can't put the faces on. So one was the guard, which you said, which was um, uh, Matthias. Uh, yeah, Matthias or whatever. That's it. Uh, which is played by Sterling K. Brown, who was in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Uh, he's the only, it's the only fa- only thing I know him from. But uh, you know how when um, uh, Jake is um, uh, um, Jake and um, uh, Holt are interrogating that one guy, and he's the dentist. dentist. Yeah, yeah. So it's him. Oh no way! And I recognize, okay. and I, I knew he knew his voice. And once again, the their Anna and Elsa's grandfather, who's played by Alfred uh, Molina. Um, that was Doc Hawk from mm. Spider Man Three. So there you go, kids. Small world of voiceover. Yeah, because I was like, these these voices sound way too familiar for me to not know who it is. And there you go. Yeah. Anyway, continue, please. So <laughs> that's that's so basically when we've been talking about Anna breaking the dam, that's the whole point. Is she realizes the oh, yeah, dam yeah. is the thing that is killing the forest and keeping people trapped there. But um, it will get rid of. Um, it's going to destroy and. Arundel? Arundel, yeah. yeah. Which is why the spirits had pushed everyone out of Arundel because they knew what needed to be done. Yes. So now she understands what needs to be done and they destroy the dam. Um, and as the water is crashing towards Arundel, mm. Anna, uh, because Anna has done that, she done what needed to be done. She frees Elsa, who had frozen because she'd huh? went, she went too deep into, like, the truth in the past or something weird like that i uh, know oh because in the song it says go too deep and you'll drown or something yeah and what she did she went too deep into the past and she ended up freezing yeah for some reason who thought someone with frozen powers could freeze <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so then elsa comes back on her water once horse. again same beats as the the last movie someone gets frozen yep and the other sister has to save and the other them. one has to save them um that she she With then love. comes out on the horse <laughs> once again that's the theme again is love everyone loves love but anyway elsa comes out on this horse oh you need his love and she oh my god she comes towards arendelle just as the water's getting there and she makes this basically like ice wall so that it goes badass again it goes round yeah. Uh, Arundel saving the city, and then that they get reunited, and Kristoff finally proposes. Oh, this is where the mushiness happens. Olaf like, oh. is back. I have one question for you. Do you want to build a snowman? I was like, Ugh! Ugh! why? I was like, yes. Cringe. <laughs> too it's much too mushy. mushy. Can I give a shout out to the, whoever thought of that moment where um. Cool. they're in the enchanted forest like for the first time and Olaf's like wandered off uh, yeah I, 
Oh, oh, sorry. And he starts calling out for different people's names. And Samantha? Then he, yeah, he calls out for a Samantha. And then he's like, I don't even know a Samantha. But then he calls for her again. It's a really funny show where it's just like, he's like peeking through like a log or something. It's like, Samantha? <laughs> um, yeah. Like, but it li- I, 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 sorry. I was going to say, it literally just sounds like, like they let Josh just like he's improvise just vamping, as yeah. he was shouting the lines. And then he just like... Maybe to himself, he, he like, probably I just forgot. <laughs> he probably just said the name and then he, he probably just started laughing at himself. Going, "There's no Samantha." Yeah, and I feel like <laughs> and that, it was something like that, and they were like, "We'll keep that in." Yeah, way, but yeah. Um, but that brings it like, uh, yeah, I, I completely forgot this moment. It's like my favorite moment is when they first meet the the forest people and the Arendelle people, and then he's like, yeah. it's like, oh, oh my it's God, like yes. he's like, hold on, guys." Let me just explain this to him. And then he just does a full rundown of the first movie. He does a one man show. He does like a one man show the whole film and it is it's truly the funniest thing in the movie. It's just so well done. And he's like beating it off. He's just going so quickly, so quickly. And you see it cuts occasionally to like the different people of the tribes in the army and they're like they're like uh, gar- really? gasping and they're like they're emotional and this and the other, like watching this Oh no, intense- Anna Yeah <laughs> You know, it's 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 fantastic and, and he even like runs through the songs and all that. Yeah, he does. Um oh it's so funny. And then uh, but yeah, I thought it was really funny. It was. It was hilarious. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to talk about, um from this film. Um, did you, was there anything that you didn't like? You, you've not really said if there's anything that, um, um, you know, like any any moments that you didn't enjoy or or did you just think this is a perfect film? I think the fact that it's got quite a lot of similar beats to the first one, I did get a little bit tired of this whole, you can't shut me out, we're in this together, you can't. Which just is, run off yeah. without me and it's then the Elsa being like I don't know one. who I am I need to find myself and I was like I thought we kind of had like <laughs> this is how that in the yeah, first exactly. one yeah um but I liked how it I really felt that they developed the other characters but I felt like Elsa although she does develop and become more secure in herself I feel like it was just building on what she had already done in the first one there wasn't as big of a character like change for her like there's that first transformation in the first one where she's building the ice castle singing let it, let it go and she brushes her hair out and she changes into the ice dress that was so powerful and, and incredible and i feel like they kind of did the same thing well, it's, where it's, she suddenly is in this white dress and she's got her hair down well that was at the end the that was at the end like this uh, cave i don't really see thing. that cuz obviously in the first one she she learned to uh, accept herself for, for who she is because obviously she's been cast aside and but now she's like, do you know what? I don't care. This is who I am. Blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't really need to be established again. So in the moment you're talking about, yeah, it's very similar. Hair's down, new dress, same beats once again, which is really, the more I talk about this film, the more I'm like, that happened in the first one. Um, but yeah, I I would say it's a completely different situation though. Fair. But yeah, I agree. There was there's nothing really going on for Elsa, I even though like... they're trying really hard. Cause I really don't. Obviously, her whole thing was, uh, you know, I got to find this voice. I've got it, you know. But then I was like, why? What's really her point? Like, what's going on with her? Yeah. So I get that. I get that point where the more I think about it, actually, what was like her journey? What was I the don't really point? know what her point Unless, was yeah. that she, because uh, at the end, Anna is then the she abdicates the throne of Arendelle, so Anna is the queen of Arendelle, and then she looks after the so forest. So she's basically like the mystical queen of the forest. Yeah, the exactly. So, um, but they're obviously talking about now, like, ruling side by side, so they're equals and this and the other. Yeah. So I get that arc, but I just didn't feel like she had... I was like, well, where is this sudden drive yeah, she to said follow that. this voice and and go on this big journey? Because even in the song, um, uh, I have it in my notes. Uh, where is it? Into the Unknown. Mm-hmm. 
she's even saying like no i've I've done my adventure i've done my finding of myself i don't need this anymore but she does it anyway <laughs> so. yeah so i didn't feel like i just yeah i suppose that's the only thing i, I think... felt was lacking was the motive and the drive was a little bit lackluster for them yeah. the this journey for her to go on unless it was meant to be like she doesn't think she's fit to be queen because she's not ready for it or whatever because th- there's a bit where she's like i don't think i'm doing a good job or whatever where is she now she's like or oh, maybe there's something else out there for me to do and then obviously she says to anna there's two sides to a bridge yeah. you know our mother had two daughters so you know it's both of us so because <laughs> I, I, I i get because like the whole message at the end where she f- you know s- saying show yourself is then she's looking Such for the truth of the fourth um, element that's been calling to her this whole time and then it turns out that it is her she is um this fourth that uh, fifth sorry element um so i get yeah so i get that it's trying the to be fifth like fifth element Emily. i get that it's trying to be like you Not are the one that's by the movie god i feel i get that it's trying to be like you are like the fifth element you are the thing that's been hiding as it were but I just still don't feel like there was enough of a well, drive for her to feel... Yeah. I don't feel like it was established enough at the beginning that she was feeling lost still, basically. Nah, they kind of really rushed it, didn't they? If they had made it out like she was feeling a lot more lost and unstable and like she was no struggling... there's no reason for her to be lost, yeah. is there? No. No, they're what, they're, it just felt like that wasn't established. That was it. Um, yeah, I agree. So I truly yeah. thought the fifth element was going to be our mum. Like, and she would rock up somewhere. She was actually like some mystical goddess thing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. But then it turned out it wasn't. Which is, that's kind of how they explain that Elsa has powers. Because her mum was from the forest. Yes, yeah, so her And she was a big from deal, the apparently. Finland tribe. Yeah, but her mum had a name as well. And I can't remember what it was. There's too many, too many names. She's like from a very long old generation i think they said no she had like an because they said we are the daughter of whatever the name because she she had a scarf and everyone recognized the scarf Mm. (laughs) what where did you get this scarf (laughs) it's fabulous so yeah basically she saved um the king when the whole forest like massacre thing happened um and so basically because she she'd saved him uh, so it was the two tribes basically coming together and they got married and obviously had children. But yeah. Sh- they were blessed, rewarded with Elsa, who had the gift of magic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that was the blessing yeah, they gave. Yeah, that was the um, blessing. Because, um, yeah. Um, another thing is I kind of liked how the elements had little characters in themselves. Oh, yeah, that was really nice. The little gecko, which reminded me of something else. The chameleon in Tangle? Yes! It, it was exactly the same, wasn't it? Almost. I it was, was like, they pretty be, much the same. I want a Disney short with the two of them. I want Pascal and I think he, the gecko has a name. Wait, let me find think? it. It doesn't have a name. I, I read it um, in like some trivia because it's never mentioned, but it is totally it does the have same. A name. So the one, was it Pascal? So from Tangle. Yeah, from, yeah Tangle. from Tangle. That was more of like a little sassy little bug. Whereas the other one was a little bit more goofy and lovable, you know what I mean? It was so cute. I'm not gonna I lie. Really, I really every time it like jumped off something, it would go like all four of its legs would like fly out. Yeah. Uh, that, I did I did have a soft spot. And then obviously the wind and the and they named uh, the wind Gale, which I thought was oh, funny. Yeah. Olaf names the wind Gale. Yeah. And, you know, it's the wind is represented by the leaves. And then water is represented by the horse. And uh, earth, earth is the is giant, the giant uh, earth. Tro- um, the, the giant earth. The earth giants. Whatever yeah, they're like giant rock um, Yeah. creatures. I'm just loading the trivia page where I saw the name. <laughs> anyway, the I'll get we'll back get it to you. at some point. Um so Emily, what are your final thoughts on Frozen? Duh. Final thoughts are, I really loved the more mature, um, like 
vibe of this film. The comedy in it was still fantastic. I love the sensitivity that they brought to Kristoff. I love the fact that Anna comes into herself a bit more. Um, I love the aesthetic and the vibe, like the autumnal vibe and the forest and stuff. And the songs, again, were incredible. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyed this film and will definitely be watching it again. So I think in total, I would give it four mystical spirits out of five. Ah, Jack. I see what you did there. Yeah, I see what you did you there. <laughs> right, you you now I tell can, them what I, I look for there. the gecko's name. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. I, in my opinion, I, I for some reason I just enjoyed this one more than the first one, even though it really does have its problems. And the more that I think about it, and the more I talk about this movie, I realize it's pretty much just the first one again. But they add in a little bit more stuff that's not really. Um, like finalized or really developed well, uh, which is disappointing because they probably could have got a really good movie out of this. Um, but I think with Frozen now, if they do another one, it's mostly for the likable characters and the music as well. The songs in this actually, I I didn't think they would do any better. I thought they would just be kind of like, yeah, that was a good song, whatever. But a couple of them, it was the only ones I liked were the two from Elsa, and and I will give a shout out to the Kristoff one, the power ballad, because it was it was a funny moment. Um, yeah. Um. But yeah, the the two Elsa songs were fantastic. Shout out to Adina Menzel, she oh gosh, can yeah. sing, like she still got it, man. She's she's been singing her whole life, you know. Her and Kristen have. I don't know if anyone's seen, but they, the two of them finally got their stars in the Walk of Fame, which they is did, so yeah. deserved. Yeah, definitely. So deserved. She's been in both for ages as well. I know. I mean, the, well, the only, th- I don't know if it was her first thing, but was Glee Adina Menzel's like? She's in it, yeah. Well, she's in it, but was that like her claim to fame? I don't no. know. Broadway, she, she was the Oh, origi- well, Broadway, she's yeah. She's the original Alphaba in, from Wicked. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, well done. Um, but yeah, she's just fantastic. Um, I almost said Kristen Stewart. <laughs> uh, uh, Kristen Bell. She's so likable and so lovable. E- even as, in real life, she's just mm. a lovely person. The two person. of them are both lovely. And yeah. and and they do work well together. But I I I don't even mention this, but I do. It's even in the first one when it comes to Adina Menzel's like voice acting character and all that. I'm just bored, and I don't know why. It's just, it's the same stuff with her character, which is, I guess, isn't really her fault. It's the writer's fault, where it's just another case of, I have to do this on my own. I'm, I have to figure myself out. And then, obviously, you got the sister. It's like, no, no, we do it together because we're family. Blech. I have to say, I think my favorite character is Anna. But yeah, I would say so. I, she's the most likable one. Um,. But yeah, I I liked how they gave Kristoff more to do. Mm-hmm. Olaf was they gave I think they gave the right the right amount of Olaf in this one. Yeah, they did. You know, it it wasn't like it was too much because they could have done that where they were like Olaf was the big thing, let's push him. He he he's what sells the movie, and they didn't really. And he, I think the jokes were, most of them fell flat. But my favorite ones were when it kind of got a little bit morbid, where it's like she's dead, <laughs> or like <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like you know her family go off on the boat trip, they died, <laughs> you know, because oh yeah. that's basically how it was in, in the movie. In the yeah, movie they're just like, dead. We're off beautiful, and it's like oh, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, there's you know it's it's great. You know, he definitely hits the beats when mm. it happens. Like yeah, Anna, uh, Elsa's doing the song. Uh, which yeah. reminded me of Little Mermaid for some reason. Oh yeah, cause yeah. You know, she's trying to do. She's trying to sing the song that she's hearing in her head out to the voice, <laughs> and then lot. Olaf joins her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. O- oh my god. <laughs> o- yeah. Olaf's like trying to mimic her, and then Anna's like, Olaf, I think maybe only one of you should be doing it. He's like, I agree. She's a little pitchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a good Disney film. You know, yeah, what do you expect? Yeah, that's a lovely moment. It's a Disney film. It looks incredible. You know, Disney have just, are knocking out of the park every time when it comes to animation. Um, 
you know, it looks beautiful. The songs are great. The characters are likable. There's no villain, which is a nice change of pace. Do you know what I hadn't even, you know, even thought, thought about, about that? it? Right? Near to die until because now. Because if if anyone's the villain in the story, it would be their their grandfather. But they don't even really address it. They kind of it's, you see Anna and Elsa, yeah. except it's now our responsibility to exactly. undo this wrong that we our grandfather did. Yeah. Um, and they realize he did it out of fear, and it's a shame that he had that fear. fear. Yeah, fear is what. Um, because he oh, so she says something like fear is he's, what you're afraid of or something uh she says you're f- she's saying oh magic isn't the thing that's like dangerous fear oh, is fear is dangerous because fear yeah. is what's made him do do this exactly betrayal. It's, yeah um, so, so they almost are coming from a place of we know he did this wrong and we know it came from a place of fear and that's a sad thing that he sh- you know he shouldn't have been fearful of this thing blah 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 mm-hmm. it was quite mature actually yeah they moved on from it pretty quickly yeah. and even when Anna finds out she realises straight away and it's kind of like oh okay I know what we need to do now mm. um, but yeah so overall I enjoyed the film it's not perfect I yeah, and I feel like I enjoyed it more than the first one because I feel like the first one was just an overhyped train where I was just like, I don't get it. It's just another Disney film. Um, so out of five, I'd probably give it like um, a three out of five. Fair enough. Before yeah. we leave, I'm just gonna say now. So he's not. <laughs> What's a gecko. his name? He's not a gecko. He's a fire salamander, and he's called oh. Bruni, and it's a he. Bruni. Bruni. Oh, how cute is that? So cute. Can we please get the adventures of Pascal and Bruni? Yeah. Well, like Pascal just gets them into mischief, and then Bruni's like. Because they kind of hinted that it's in the same universe. Yeah, because yeah. they are. You know, they come to Elsa's coronation. Because then they say, like, isn't the theory that um, Rapunzel's mum and dad are actually Elsa and Anna's mum and dad, or something like that? No, like cousins or something. Oh, cousins! Ah, uh, yeah, they're like relatives. It's so a different kingdom. So they're yeah. So they're like yeah. But both kingdoms are supposed like based off of kind of that Nordic like yeah yeah vibe and stuff. Yeah. So they've got similar kind of feels and stuff. I, I, you never know. Disney might just hit out with a crossover one day, and then it's everyone's going to be like freaking out. I will cry. Yeah. I almost cried when it's the, the opening Avengers of... initiative. Oh my god. <laughs> See right, I'm gonna admit this right now. You guys were gone momentarily. They had, they went to get the food. Um oh, right yeah. as it right as it opened and oh, it's yeah. like the opening like chant and it just shows off the Disney castle and I was choking up. I was like Really? Oh, yeah. Were you that excited? I was just like I just, I just, just overcome. Yes. I was just <laughs> overcome with like the emotion. I was like, Oh my god. Did you cry at all? Almost. I kept looking at you. My mum cried. Was your mum crying? Sorry, mum, to admit this, but if you're listening. But yeah, she cried. W- was she it cr- the song um, about when she saw her mum? No? No, it was when oh, okay. um, Anna was singing about feeling grief and stuff and like feeling sad and now she had to like make oh, the next yeah, best yeah. death and stuff. Oh, fair play. I didn't cry. I th- I almost, I very <laughs> was so close. <laughs> anyway, yeah. And that's it, you know. Yeah. That's what we thought Frozen Two. Uh, what? Do Sorry, you... this has been such like a mishmash, but also we would love, love, we would like to apologize for our little hiatus. Uh, we've missed out in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, due to personal reasons and busy schedules and all that, but we have something coming in December. We are so and we are so this. excited about it. And if you stay till the end of this podcast, you get a little teaser of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at the Mate Do Review, where you will see a trailer, Emily, a trailer. Oh my god! For what's coming this December. We are next level professional now. I know. We're excited. This is what it's been building up to. We wanted to prepare ourselves for um, this coming month. And uh, so this Saturday, stay tuned for the 1st of December because we got something planned. And we're very excited to show you. So please follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook for any updates and trailers and whatnot. Please at continue. At the Mate Do Review. 
I was going to say, please continue to send your messages and your comments and stuff because we love it when we hear that you guys are enjoying the podcast and your thoughts even constructive criticism you know because we're still learning and we're, yeah, developing we're and stuff struggling. 100% <laughs> so please keep them coming because it's so lovely when you guys do yeah, comment and share because that's why we do this we want people to hear our opinions and then we want to hear your opinions and it really warms our hearts when we hear uh, get someone's opinion on our reviews and what they thought of the films that we reviewed as well. Um, so please, and if you have any requests or any um, inquiries for us, please email us at themakedopodcast at gmail.com. Um, anything else to add, Emily? Have a lovely day. Thank you. And uh, it's good to be back. It's good <laughs> to be back in the podcasting route. Stay tuned. For a little teaser of what's coming for this holiday season. My name is Jack. My name is Emily. And that will do. That will do. On the first-